Now, have you ever wondered why it is that whether you shoot Sony, Canon, Lumix, or Fuji, each one of them have their own version of this lens? They each have an expensive version, which is around 2,000 bucks, and they also offer a more affordable one, which is around 200 bucks. And if you've been in the camera scene for any amount of time, then you probably already know. I'm talking about the good old Nifty 50. And even though you may already know about this lens, by the end of this video, you're gonna know exactly why this focal length is so popular, and what are the real differences between the $2,000 version and the $200 version? Now real quick before we get started, if the audio sounds different in this video than it normally does, it's because I'm testing out a new microphone from Joby called the Wave Pro. So shout out to Joby for sending that out. Now why is the 50 millimeter such a classic and nostalgic focal length? Well, because it's so versatile. It can be used for portraiture, landscapes, street photography, and you hear filmmakers often talk about which one is the most natural field of view. Is it the 35 millimeter or the 50 millimeter? And it seems like most filmmakers will lean towards the 50 as being the closest to what we see with our eyes. And in my opinion, it's perfect as a base focal length because it's not so tight that you can't get establishing shots with it, and it's not so wide that you can't get detailed shots with it. It's right there in the middle where you can move a little bit closer or just move a little bit further back and use it for all types of scenarios. And if you were to put your camera into crop mode or use this on an APS-C camera, then you take that 50 millimeters and you multiply it by 1.5 and it gives you close to about 80 millimeters, which is a lot tighter than 50, but still extremely useful for portraits, close-ups, detailed B-roll shots, and all types of other scenarios. And the fact that they're mostly f1.8 aperture lenses means you're gonna get beautiful background separation with that creamy bokeh, and the lens is gonna do extremely well in low light. And the icing on the cake is most definitely the price. The cheapest one is the Canon EF version, which is only like $125 brand new. The RF version is 165, and the most expensive one is a Lumix Nifty 50, which is currently around 350 bucks. Now let's talk about the differences between the high-end pro $2,000 version of this lens and then the normal Nifty 50, which most of us are using. And to be able to get a clearer picture as to what those differences are, there's a principle that you should be familiar with. So let's imagine you started off with a $1,000 camera, right? You used it for a few months and you were like, you know what, I'm ready to upgrade to the next level, and you went to a $2,000 camera. Chances are, you're gonna be blown away by the difference in quality. And after some time, you're like, you know what, I'm ready to spend $4,000 on a camera, and you're thinking that the increase in quality is gonna be the same as it was when you went from $1,000 to the $2,000 level. But once you spend $4,000 on that camera, you're gonna be a little bit let down because as you start to go higher and higher, the gain in quality becomes less and less but the money starts to become more and more. And it's the same way with the Nifty 50. The difference between the Nifty 50 and your kit lens is tremendous, but the difference between the Nifty 50 and the $2,000 version isn't nearly as tremendous. But that begs the question, what are the differences? The first difference is gonna be the sharpness, especially the edge and corner sharpness. But there's two things to say about that. One of them is that the average person is hardly gonna be able to tell the difference, but if you pixel peep, no doubt you'll be able to tell. And two, if you're talking about film making, one of the reasons vintage lenses are so popular is because of these type of imperfections. They give the footage character. So for many filmmakers, less sharpness and other minor imperfections are actually a plus in certain cases. Another thing is that the expensive 50 millimeters are gonna have less chromatic aberrations, also known as color fringing. But again, when it comes to filmmaking, that's actually one of the qualities that add character to the lens. And for photographers, you can get rid of chromatic aberrations with just a click or two in Lightroom, or most any any other professional photo editing software. And the last major optical difference is that the aperture on the expensive 50 millimeter lenses is oftentimes f1.4 or even 1.2. And although that makes a tremendous difference when it comes to the amount of light that the lens is gonna let in, many people who are buying those lenses aren't buying them for the extra low light capability. But instead, they want that faster aperture because of the amount of bokeh or background blur that it's gonna make. And the thing about that is that the cheaper 50 millimeter lenses already have an f1.4 1.8 aperture, which is plenty of background blur. So once you go to f1.4 or f1.2, it's a bit excessive because you can no longer distinguish what's going on in the background. It looks like some sort of abstract painting 
or just a big blurry mess. So yeah, optically, those are the major differences between the expensive and the cheaper Nifty 50. But there's also some other quality factors that aren't optical, but they may still be important to you. Things like the build quality, the type of weather sealing, the materials it was made from, etc. So does all of that make it worth 10 times the price? I don't know, that's for you to decide. And just in case that it does, I left links in the description below to both the cheaper Nifty 50 and the expensive one. And again, the Nifty 50 is available for pretty much every camera system. Me personally, I own the Canon version of the Nifty 50 and I use it on my Canon cameras and also my Lumix S5 Mark II with the Sigma MC21 adapter that allows you to use EF lenses. But I also just ordered the Lumix 50 millimeter, so I can't wait to see how that one stacks up against my Canon version. And I see a lot of you asking me in the comments about which lenses I use, which camera I use, and how I light my videos to get these looks. And although the lens and the camera that you use are extremely important, the thing that's gonna make the biggest difference is your lighting. That's why I highly recommend you watch this video next where I tell you exactly how I light these talking head videos. I appreciate you watching to the end. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure to do so. And if you got any value out of this video, make sure to leave it a like. And I'll see you in the next one. It's Fulan Creative and I'm out. Peace.